I remember when I first started hearing about coaching, it felt yeah. like maybe five or 10 years yeah. ago. Yeah. To me, I was like, what is this gimmick? Yeah, yeah. People it, without any qualifications yeah. asking for money so they can <clears throat> what? Matt. But, but, but yeah, so what's been your kind of journey yeah. understanding this? So and, I think it can be very gimmicky. Um, I think there's actually, I think there's a lot of, a, a lot of charlatans out there, even in the Catholic world. Um, let's name names. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I, let's, let's do this. Uh, throw down the therapeutic gauntlet, right? Uh, I, I do look, Catholic people are hungry for help. Um, and some of these folks, I think promote, uh, what they do. Um, as being very unique and, and they use big words like Catholic anthropology. Mm -hmm. And so Catholics in some ways, rightly, um, want a Catholic therapist who they feel safe with and who they feel like will respect their faith and won't, um, invite them to engage in, you know, practices or behaviors that are contrary to the morals of the faith. And so Catholics are sort of hungry for the safe place for therapy and what, I think sometimes happens is you get people who sell mm. a product that doesn't help. It, they're, they're not great therapists and they take their sort of subpar therapeutic skills and they wrap it in Catholic language and Interesting. good Catholic people are paying a lot of money for this. They're paying a lot of money. And that to me is now, do you find unjust. That, <clears throat> yeah. Do you find that you would be in agreement with many Catholic therapists about this thing you're talking about and these people being kind of charlatans? Because um, the reason I, I ask that is I imagine yeah. people would love it. Like, is there a place that I can go that can help me discern what's going to be actually <clears throat> helpful and what's not? Yeah. Or is there not such a place and I just have to figure this out on yeah. my own? I don't think there is yet such a place. Um, and sometimes the people that are, are, you know, anyway, I, the, the people that, you know, sometimes, um, how to say this, the people that are maybe um, the most prominent, the people that are, you know, it can be deceptive because because the folks that you end up encountering and seeing in these spaces um, are the ones that are putting themselves out there yeah. um, quite a bit. And well, I think the people that I think maybe are some are, yeah. I, I've been really surprised at how many amazing Catholic therapists I've met who are. They should have a huge platform, but people have never heard they're of them. They're quiet. They're humble. Give us a couple of names. Yeah. So um, down in, uh, uh, where is he? Tennessee, I think he is. Um, maybe Georgia now. Mario Sacasa, um, he's a licensed marriage and family therapist, Dr. Mario Sacasa. He's, the guy's great. He's great. Um, really intelligent, really thoughtful, um, interested in bringing the faith into um, therapy in a way that works and fits and is, is measured and tempered. And um, he's great. Um, Dr. Ed Rogers, uh, he's Donna Baylor. He's the director of their um, counseling center, or they're, they're, he's the director of clinical training at their counseling center. Um, these are these are guys who are just you're never gonna you're never gonna hear about them. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. It's kind of like it's kind of true in most fields, though, isn't it? Like yeah. the greatest theologians aren't the ones with the greatest websites. Yeah, it's knuckleheads like me. Well, and well, who are hopefully or, appointing people to the great <laughs> theologians. No, right. I mean, to you, look. One benefit of what, I mean, you're using your platform to elevate these folks who uh, wouldn't yeah. otherwise be seen and heard. And um, well, how yeah. long does somebody, yeah. how, how long would somebody need to be with a therapist or coach until yeah. they realize I should be experiencing more help than I'm experiencing? Does that yeah. make sense? It does. Like someone might be doing this right now. It does. How long should they be with this person until they can gauge for themselves? This is actually yeah. helping. I, I don't think it takes very long. Look, I think in the first session, the first time you meet, you should generally get a sense of, is this person genuine? Um, is this person, are they connecting with me? Do I feel like this person gets me, right? Mm -hmm. there, there's a, a sense of um, sort of therapeutic bond or alliance. This person really is trying to understand my experience. I don't feel like they're sort of coming over the top and, and taking my problem and f uh, sort of fitting it into what they want to treat. They're really hearing me, right? They're really hearing me. You can get the sense of that pretty quickly. Um, and then are we on the same page? Are we, are they sort of hearing my goals? Are they hearing what I want to work on? Are they hearing, um, sort of what I'm saying deeply and they want to collaborate with me? That makes um, sense. Yeah. And, and maybe the last thing is, are these assignments they're giving me is the homework is that, 
am I getting a benefit out of it? Yeah. I mean, am I actually noticing change? And do I feel comfortable? Here, here's a nice little indicator. Do I feel comfortable going back to this therapist or coach and saying, hey, this, this, it's not working. Something's not working. If you don't feel comfortable going back and saying that to your therapist or coach, they haven't created the right environment. Mm. Right? I don't think they've created the right environment. There's not a, a deep enough or rich enough bond there. And that says something. I love what yeah. you said there, that first point about, are they just trying to fit my problems into their preconceived categories yeah, 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 or are they yeah, trying yeah, to understand yeah, yeah. me first? Yeah. yeah. Did you watch that show uh, with Will Smith about the doctor? What was that called? Gosh, it'll oh. break you. Who was it? Do you mind looking that up? Yeah. What was it on? Apple TV. It's Will Smith and somebody else. Don't know. It was a bad, it was a true story about a therapist that just totally took advantage of his clients. Hmm. Um, and like moved oh. into this guy's summer yes, home. Yes, yes, yeah. I saw, I saw a preview over. for this on, on Apple TV. I saw a preview. Oh yeah, my yeah. gosh. I, I didn't mean, breathe I saw... <laughs> for the entire season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just... we, it's funny, Britt and I were looking for a show to watch and we opted for something a little lighter because it just he, looked, oh I mean, it looked kind of heavy. It'd be really interesting to get your take on that. Yeah. It's funny when I look for a show these days, yeah. I'm like, does it have sex stuff in it? Yeah. No, all right, we'll give that we're a shot. You know, yeah. And if, if it's not like blasphemous or crude, yeah. did you find it? Yeah, is it the therapist next? Or the yeah. Yeah. Next yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Oh. Yes. I'll oh. have to check it out. I just wanted to punch that therapist in the face repeatedly. Dude, I mean, what does that say about boundary? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Can we lay down on this table? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, I mean, and, I mean, your original question about sort of coaching, I, I felt the same way. That coaching seemed to me to be a way to just um, have somebody who isn't trained in anything collect a lot of money and and look, there's big money in training coaches. I mean, oh, the, wow. the real money is in the people that are creating <laughs> and in the all people these who are training them. It's right. like this <laughs> weird Russian up, doll right? situation. It just <laughs> yeah, keeps getting yeah. deeper. So we got all these coaches who have like nobody to treat, but we got these businesses pumping them out. But um, here's here's what I wanted to do. I mean, two things. I'll tell you what motivated me. You have to be really careful. Um, there are strict licensure rules and, and different states have different laws around how you can practice. And, and most states, when it comes to therapy and counseling, you can't practice across state lines. You're licensed in a particular state. Ah, uh, I see. Right? And so I can do telehealth with anyone in the state of Ohio, but I can't practice with people in California or New Mexico or Arizona. So. In some ways, what coaching has become is a backdoor to, uh, because it's an unregulated, unlicensed profession, which is partially why you have to be careful, right? Because anyone can be a coach. One of the benefits, though, is you can coach anywhere with anyone. And so... So when you do a Zoom meeting with a client, yeah. you're a coach, essentially, um, because you can't practice... Uh, therapy you, in well, California. Well, yeah. So you have to be really careful. Like, so you have to be really careful what you're doing. And so so I would never I would never tell I would never tell a client um this is basically therapy but I'm calling it coaching. Exactly. I want to be really clear what we're doing. So if we're doing therapy, um we're going to have a, a really clear treatment plan. We're going to um my style changes a little bit in therapy. I'm I tend to be a little less directive in mm. therapy. And this is partially why for me, I wanted to develop a clear coaching like model and um, goal. So, so the goal of our coaching, sometimes coaching is like we're doing Catholic coaching, Catholic life coaching, which I think ends up being just therapy, but we call it coaching. And that, that's a problem in my mind. I think somebody has to be really clear. Therapy and, and counseling looks like this. And coaching looks like this. Can it, you give us a sentence summary yeah, of each? If yeah. you could boil it down, what's therapy, what's coaching? Or yeah. is that way too difficult? Well, no, I, I mean, it's not. I, I think there's no clear standard out there, right? Mm. The market is, so you have some coaches who are essentially doing therapy. When you when you ask them, what, what do you do? They say, well, I ask open-ended questions. I try to um, uh, bring out the obstacles that are impeding this person from having the kind of life they want to have. And... Uh, so we clarify their goals. We look at the obstacles. We even do some, um, uh, we look at their thoughts and, and look at, uh, do some reality testing. Are their thoughts reasonable? Are they rational? Are they helpful? Or are they maladaptive? Mm. I mean, they're essentially doing like cognitive behavioral therapy. They're just calling it coaching. And then you might have some bad therapists who are just being like, hey, make your bed and like right. exercise three times a week. So right. how, how then would you maybe define coaching and therapy? Right. So, and, and that's why what I've done is I've, 
I think coaching in my mind is something very, very specific. I want to have a very specific yeah. target for my coaching. So it's not sure. life coaching. We're not sure. doing all of life. If you want to talk about all of life, we're, that's going to be therapy or counseling. And then you're going to have to be in the state of Ohio, right? Mm -hmm. But coaching here is going to be giving you some tips, tricks, and principles to help you, at least from my view, to help you deepen your identity yep. in Christ. And, Love it. and so what I'm trying to do personally anyway, is try to avoid that confusion um, because look, and, and the other thing I'd say is this, it, look, if you don't belong in coaching, if, if you have sort of moderate or severe mental health problems, you're not a, you're not a coaching, you're not, you're not a good candidate for coaching. Like somebody who's got sort of mild, you know, mild, maybe, maybe low, moderate, but like mild mental health concern, a little bit of anxiety, maybe a little bit of low mood, a little bit of social anxiety or somebody who has mild mental health problems, you could do coaching with them. And I think it could be reasonable and, but sort of personally, if somebody's coming to me saying they want coaching, but we end up spending a lot of time talking about sort of these moderate or severe mental health issues, they need to be referred to counseling or psychotherapy. Um, we shouldn't try to use coaching as a Trojan horse. I don't think yeah. that's how it's often used though, as a Trojan horse for therapy. So you can practice across state lines. That makes sense. I want to be focused. I want to mm. be really, really tightly focused because I think that's helpful for clients. Yeah. Um, hey, thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below letting us know what you thought about the video.